one potato left over, what will we do with it? Well, we could turn it into a stamp, couldn't we? First of all, take a knife and very carefully cut it in halves, making sure your fingers are well away from the blade so that the blade can't possibly go through anywhere near your fingers as it goes through the potato. Try and make the cut as straight as possible. And then take that potato and you're going to make a stamp, a little bit like a rubber stamp. The first thing you'll need to do is to mark out the letters that you want. If you want your initials, put them on there, back to front. Well, I'm going to put Curiosity Show, CS, on here. So I'll start by writing a back to front C. There we are. In that position there. And then a back to front S, which will be roughly in this position here. I'm using a, a permanent marker so that it does actually mark on the surface of the potato. There we are. Back to front C, back to front S. Next thing to do is to cut those out. Cut all the spare potato away. You can start by, first of all, slicing around the outside of the C and the S. You don't have to go through all the way through. You can chop it across like so. But keep on doing that all the way around the outside of the C and the outside of the S, and then with the point of the knife, carefully dig out the bits from the middle. Well, I've already done this, as you might have guessed, and there it is there. C and S. Back to front C, back to front S, for the right way around curiosity show. Now, to make a stamp, all we need to do is to take some paint, any sort of water-based paint will do, but acrylic paints are good because they have nice bold colours, and paint that over the surface of the raised letters. This is a little bit like printing, the way that newspapers and magazines are printed. There we are. And now if you put that on as evenly as you can, when you turn it up the other way and press it down onto a piece of paper or cardboard, you should get an impression, CS, the right way round. And by trying it out a few times, you'll find out just how far, how hard you need to press and how many imprints you can get from one stamp. There it is there. And of course, you can do other things with it as well. You can make patterns if you want it. Take another piece of potato, and if you want to make a star pattern, for example, you might choose to draw the star, six-pointed star, perhaps. Mark out the surface on the surface of the potato. Cut away the surplus bits and pieces of potato. I've already done this. There it is, the finished product. Pretty rough looking star, you might say. Guess what colour I'm going to paint on the surface. You can see that I've already tried it with red paint. So once again, make the paint fairly thick. Paint it onto the surface. And you'll almost always find that the first stamp that you make looks a bit blobby. So you might want to do that on a piece of scrap paper first. And from then on, they may come out a little more evenly. There we are, as many as you like. Uh, or, if you want it, you can use other vegetables. For example, take a slice of carrot. You can see I've already started to cut a pattern on the surface here. If I want to, I can dig out little holes from the centre of each of the quadrants. That's one. Wherever you dig out a hole or cut a slice, of course, the paint or the ink won't get in there. So that'll just leave the paper exactly as it is. It's only the raised surfaces that are going to give you that impression. Now, if we want to, we can paint a colour on here. Let's take green this time. Once again, colour all over. Make sure that it's thick enough to cover the surface well, thin enough to sit down in the little hole but not cause too much trouble on the surface of the paper. And away we go again with our pattern, once again. Well, you can do that and you can also make borders if you want to. That's very easy. Just take a slice of carrot. You can see what I've done there. And I've made little chops diagonally all the way around. You find that when you put uh, your ink or paint on there and run it along the paper with a nail in the middle just to help that process, you make a border, which might give an interesting effect along the edge of the picture that you're creating. Looks a bit like a tire track, doesn't it? Try other things such as spinach stalks, onions, Brussels sprouts. They have their own pattern. You don't need to do any cutting. And then try mixing your colours and patterns any way you like to give whatever effect you want.